Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. Today we're taking a look at the 1100 millimeter PC21 by FMS. Before we get started, I need to let you know this video is sponsored by FMS who sent me this PC21 for review. And I wanna let you know if you'd like to pick one up for yourself, I'll have an affiliate link in the description. Just so you know, affiliate links result in a little bit of a commission kickback for me, but they don't cost you anything extra. That expense is borne by FMS. So if you'd like to grab one of these Pilatus PC21 airplanes for yourself, there'll be an affiliate link in the description for you to use. If you've followed my channel for any length of time, you know I've already actually reviewed this plane, but that was about 15,000 subscribers ago. So not everyone goes back and looks at all the old videos. And when FMS said, hey, John, would you like to take a look at the PC21 for us? I said, sure, I'd love to. As usual, I like to give you a look at how it comes out of the box so you understand what kind of packing job FMS does. I think they do a great job. You can see everything is locked in there nice and secure. The wings have protection from even the prop. They put a little piece of foam right there to separate the prop from the wing. So they do a really nice job and they pay attention to little details like that. I always like to see the way FMS packages models for shipping. They just do a really nice job. Let's get it out of the box and take a look. Key specifications on this plane, 1100 millimeters or 43.3 inches on the wingspan. It's got an overall length of 1235 millimeters or 48.6 inches. It's got a flying weight of around 1680 grams. The motor is a 3541 750 kV spun by a 40 amp ESC and a 10 by seven five bladed prop. And this is a really cool propeller. I love the way this prop sounds on this plane, very neat. And the airframe uses seven nine gram servos and they will all be FMS servos in this case. This particular model also comes with the Reflex V2 and having flown a number of the Reflex V2 gyros, I am highly confident it's gonna perform very well in that plane. I can just tell by looking at it. And finally, FMS recommends a four cell 2600 to 3300 milliamp hour 35C battery. First up, we'll take a look at the manual. This is a standard FMS paper black and white manual. English only in this one, so if you need a language other than English, be aware of that. And just like every other FMS manual I've ever checked, they've got specifications up front, a nice little parts breakout so you understand what you're supposed to have, and engineering exploded diagrams showing how everything goes together. So these manuals are very well done. This plane is quite simple to put together. There won't be too many issues there, but everything you need to know about the setup, center of gravity, weights, batteries, all of that stuff right here in the manual. And for airplanes equipped with the Reflex V2 gyro, they also include a little paper addendum to explain how things work on the gyro and how to set it up correctly. Of course, the way they come from the factory, there's really no work you have to do on the gyro. You basically just plug things in. I already touched on the prop. Again, I've already flown this plane. This is one of the coolest things about the plane. These props, it almost sounds like an actual turbo prop. I really like the prop. I like the way it looks and the white stripes on the tip just give that nice little scale effect when this prop is spinning get a nice white arc around the prop circle. Very cool. Here's a look at the wings. This is a one piece design, so no assembly to do here. All the electronics and wires are already pre-installed. The cables are wound up tight and they're all labeled. So when you go to connect everything to your receiver and the gyro, it's all marked and laid out for you. No problems there. Four screws attach this wing to the fuselage, two in the front, two in the back. On the back side, we've got clevises with shrink tubing over the clevis on the control horn. I really approve of that and they're using the standard nine gram FMS servos. I've got plenty of experience with these. They tend to work quite well. And of course, this one does have retracts. No covers over the wheels. That's not a mistake. That's the way it comes out of the box. I've always liked the color scheme on this plane. It's a very bright red and those hits of white really make it pop in the air. So it's a very attractive color scheme in the air and it looks great while it's flying. There is some dihedral in this plane too. I just wanna make you aware of that. If you look at those wings, you can definitely see the dihedral there. So keep that in mind. If you're looking for something that's got some self-centering capabilities, this is a good option for you. There's also a little bit of washout on the wing tips. That's by design. The flaps have this really interesting kind of quasi split flap design. So when you move the flaps down, you can see they do separate from the trailing edge of the wing and they're hidden somewhere underneath. And then the control surfaces are hinged by EPO. I think most of you know how I feel about that. It's okay day one to fly it that way, but over time, it's not a terrible idea to go ahead and cut those free. And instead of relying on the EPO hinge, go ahead and insert a CA hinge. That'll give you a little bit more longevity. I like that approach a little better for planes that I fly that are made out of EPO and that I intend to fly quite a bit. 
Next up are the horizontal stabilizers and elevators. Again, EPO hinges there on the back. Don't forget to flex these before you fly. You just want to take that load off your servos. There is a torque tube that's keyed for the other half, so they'll slide together in the fuselage, and then you can see two screw holes where this will screw into the fuselage. That's really nice if you like to take your airplanes apart, so this one screws together. You should be able to take that horizontal stabilizer off without too much effort. And here's a look at the port side horizontal stabilizer. The leading edge, perfectly straight, no damage, no issues on this at all. The paint looks fantastic. And you can see the control horn is even already attached and it's red, it matches the paint job. Very nice, very nice. There is a little spar tube that'll go in between the two halves of the horizontal stabilizer. And then the plastic spinner is included. Keep in mind, this is a little proprietary because it's a five blade spinner. So just keep that in mind. You don't use standard spinners on this one. It's a five bladed. And normally I kind of bow up against that, but in this case, you got to give it to them because it's a scale detail. They're using a five bladed prop and you definitely are going to need the spinner to marry up to that five bladed prop. The final element is the fuselage. Nice details here. You've got the exhaust flanges right there. There's a pilot in the center. And if you can see on the cockpit, they actually have some detail on there as well. So single pane of glass, modern avionics, very cool looking cockpit detail. And then there's a latch right here to release the canopy. You just slide that back and you lift the canopy up. And you can see the canopy has got a little tongue up front that slides it into the fuselage. That makes sure it stays nice and flat and secure to the airframe while you're flying. So I definitely like that quite a bit. And then inside we can see the space for the electronics, the receiver, your battery, and your wires. There's the Reflex V2. That's actually already mounted on there. And I do notice there's a little bit of a slant there. I wonder if that's been accounted for in their calibration. I'll assume that it has. I'll just assume that it has. Uh, PWM leads, if you're not using a serial protocol, uh, you've got a bunch of PWM leads, but if you do use a serial protocol, you can take these all out and replace them with one single wire. So you can run SBUS into a Reflex V2, just so you're aware. Plenty of space inside for your battery and putting your electronics down. There's absolutely no problem there. And FMS also includes a couple of battery straps and Velcro to attach your battery to the battery deck. And here's a look at the starboard side of the fuselage. I don't see any issues there. The graphics are applied very clean and you've got your servo back here for your elevator and some plastic captures for the elevator half. And if you pay attention, you can even see little details like plastic antennas right here on the top. Very nice. And right here up on the vertical stabilizer as well. Very cool looking plane, man. I like that red a lot. It's a really sharp looking airplane in the sky. And to wrap up this first look, you get a USB-C cable to connect your Reflex V2 gyro to your computer if you need to do that for whatever reason. And here's a look at the hardware bag. I've stolen the prop nut and put that on the prop already and a couple of wing screws to hold that wing on and that's about it. Other than that, you got a couple more screws to hold your control surfaces on and it looks like probably the rudder control linkage and that's about it. Very simple assembly on this plane. That wraps up my first look at the 1100 millimeter Pilatus PC-21 by FMS. I'd like to say thanks to FMS for sending this plane out for review. I'll get it put together and at the field just as soon as I can so we can see it fly. I want to remind you, if you like this kind of material, make sure you smash that thumbs up button, subscribe and hit the bell so you know when new videos hit the channel. YouTube should recommend another video for you right now. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy and go fly something.